Point Perrin is a pristine location with beautiful beaches, with views right across to not only Garden Island, but as far as Fremantle, and as well as the Shoalwater Bay Marine Park. Uh, the infrastructure, unfortunately, needs upgrades with pathways, toilet facilities, barbecue areas and picnics, and of course, the battery itself that we must preserve. We must turn that into an interpretive walk trail. And most importantly, what should be replaced is the barracks that's been ripped down. And then we need to build a coastal defence museum, not just for Western Australia. This would be a museum to pretty much educate people on one aspect. And that's the battle on what happened on our own soils during World War II. We did all our training at the Birch Street Barracks, Victoria Barracks and Birch Street. But we never saw a gun for about three months. It was mainly foot drill and rifle drill. Uh, we did our rookies at the Claremont Teachers College. And uh, that was six weeks, I think. We did all our marching all around Claremont. <laughs> where, where all the shops are now. And, uh, and then we went, went to Buckland Hill uh, for, to do our course for the anti-aircraft. We'd, uh, we knew all about the Pearl Harbour bombing, but we never actually expected a, a raid on Darwin it, itself. So consequently, it, it, uh, it took uh, us really by surprise, and particularly those who had not only hadn't heard a gun fire, but also had very limited training on the guns. In fact, the, uh, by the time we fired the first round, it's been said that the bombs were already falling. But no, no, no one knew anything about Darwin at all. E even today, people are surprised. Oh, I think. People were worried, and, and uh, some, it, 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 there weren't hardly any men around, you know, because they were all um, away, uh, and the, the things uh, started drying up in the shops, and we had rations, you know, ration for coupons and that. The Point Parent battery is one battery that was part of a group of batteries, which was called the Fremantle Fortress. And the Fremantle Fortress was as far north as Swanbourne and as far south as Point Perrin. We had over 160 submarines based at Fremantle Harbour. Uh, some of them were from Britain, some of them from, uh, they're also Dutch, uh, but with that came more than 10,000 Americans. We used to have chutes because um, they weren't the enemy, but uh, we, we had a plane that used to tow, tow a drogue. Uh, and we had to, we had to shoot. We had, we had to do our job, and the boys had to fire at that. Uh, you, we, there always had to be a manning. There were uh, four manning all the time, and we didn't have enough sometimes. And uh, we'd, we'd often get uh, a month before we could get any leave. And then so, so it was a 24-hour, seven days a week thing. Um, uh, not like the ones that the, the ones that were in uh, other jobs where they were nine to five or something. I wanted to go in as a signaller. When I got there, they said, "I oh, know we've got enough signals, so you can go in the anti-aircraft." And, and then once I've got your name down, they can do what they like with you. But um, it was it was really great because it was like a family. And the one I went in uh, to was. Um, the mainly country girls, and I'd, I had been a country girl myself. I remember, remember the day of, that the that they finished in the Middle East, and the, there was about nine big ships in at Fremantle, and the, they, all the men came, the men that came home from the Middle East, and they all arrived. Oh, oh, huge day it was, you know, to all those men come home after for about six years or something. And they had all the, the big ships there, Aquitania and all those big ones with them. Some blokes didn't like the idea of, of uh, us being there. But we had to do everything that they did. We had to go on guard and with, with a rifle and everything. But the, the difference, they used to, um, we have to used to go in pairs. 
uh, whereas they used to be on guard by themselves. It was rather when I went up to Park Station first off, uh, each, each day the list of duties is put up on the notice board and amongst the discard duty and I went up and read it and how some of, uh, some of my own gunners had come up there with me. I noticed that their names were also mixed up with guard duties with the female AWAS. I, th I thought to myself, well that doesn't seem too good. I went up and saw the officer in charge and I said, I don't think it's a very good idea to put my gunners <laughs> up there with the girls. So, he, he, he got my point. Well, being a resident here for pretty much most of my life, um, all over, not only Rockingham, but Fremantle, uh, these batteries, what's left of them, uh, have just been sitting here in disrepair, being neglected uh, by vandals as well as graffitied. And I just thought it was really time now that we were to get a group together in order to preserve uh, the infrastructure but also to transform it into something that the public could use and be educated by. There's about uh, 30 of us were sent down to Rockingham to a camp down here. One occasion there was a, a chap, he started up a, a dance hall over at Rockingham itself. He, he wanted to put a trop tropical atmosphere in, in this uh, dance hall so he had these kentia palms scattered around outside or inside a few of them. He called it the Trocadero and he started it up but for some reason or rather another sergeant and myself, we both went on leave over the weekend. Got back on leave and of course we were only in tents at that time and out just about outside every tent around the place where I could see kentia palms so I thought oh, there. I knew strife had gone on. So uh, <clears throat> we got the guns together and said, well, what happened down here over the weekend? Oh, we just went into town for a dance, Sarge, you know, nothing, nothing, nothing much. And I said, well, what about these Kentia palms? And they said, yeah, we, we borrowed a few to brighten up the campsite. I met my, my uh, ex-fiancé there, actually. She became my wife later on, that's why she's an ex. Were the Americans different to the Australian soldiers? Oh yeah, because they were spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they used to get every, everything, you know. And, they, they, and the, the girls that used to go out with them would get, end up getting silk stockings and things like this. <laughs> things that you, you, uh, you couldn't even, even buy here, you know, because there was nothing like that. Uh, but um, uh, not, not, it didn't affect us so much because we were in camp and that most of the time. But the, you know, a lot of the girls, were, the civvies, they, they used to go out with them. They used to be, be, but the other ones I met were all really nice folks. And I think everybody just got on with it. You know, you, you had, had your jobs to do and and. Uh, with like 18 year olds, it was all a big adventure anyway. <laughs> and uh, so we got, that's where I, I start to get in contact with the people at uh, Point Perrin. And then they, it came up about where they had the observation post right on top of the hill, the remains of which is there now. And they said, well, if you ever stepped out of line, it was silly confining them to barracks or doing something like that because they, they virtually were confined to barracks anyhow or stopped their leave but uh, so they uh, it was decided that for punishment that um, they'd uh, get a few house bricks and fill up a, uh, a haversack and have the guys run from the bottom up the, the rough stairs up to the observation post and back again so many times depending on what the what they had done. Battle for Australia Day is for us to remember those who served and lost their lives during World War II to protect Australia. So the first Wednesday of September every year we are to remember them. And I would like to see that promoted in every state and also taught in the schools. It's, it's the, the school children today can't, 
can't know anything about it because their parents don't know anything about it. I think they should all go into the army these days. <laughs> I really do because, I mean, you, you get the discipline and, and the, um, well, you grow up in the army. It was something that you just felt lost when you came out because you felt as though you'd left all your family and you're out in the in the big wide world again, you know. The, the World War II and protecting our own country, for once, this story has never ever been told properly. Nor, if you speak to the many Australians, would they understand or know what even battle for Australia is. We lost over 1,200 people in Australia protecting its own soils. And these batteries were instrumental in protecting our country from the Japanese that wanted to invade Australia. What's important is that every Australian and every visitor to our country needs to be educated on what happened here during World War II.